What's up, everybody? We back. R2C2. It's Christmas week, bro. What's going on? Yeah, is this our Christmas edition of R2C2? Yeah, this is it. This is it, man. This is it. Then we take a little break until after the new year, let people have their their holidays. (laughs) Ooh. Ooh, bless you. (laughs) Right out the gates. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Just as I was going to say, let them have their holidays, maybe differently than they were planning a week ago, thanks to Omicron, but hopefully- It is, dude, you know, what's funny, like a week ago, I forget who I was talking to, but I think it was my trainer, (coughs) Eugene. He was like, he was like, I feel like it's closing in on me. Like every day I find out someone else I know who's tested positive and (laughs) it's unbelievable. Like we're going to do my Tuesday uh, game this week, South Carolina, NC State. We did from Bristol. Are y'all you know, back we, to doing that? Like just for, oh, this, for, a, for a couple weeks. We're going to now the garden, Christmas Day at the garden. I'll be at the garden for Nick's Hawks. I'm but, trying to talk my family into going to that. They don't want to go. They, well, you have a lot of targets to get hit by Omicron if you go, you know? Yeah, I mean, but uh, <laughs> like we always, we usually go to the Christmas Day game and they don't want to like, they're not into it this year. I'm like, what the fuck? You mean you mean they don't want to see uh, uh, McBride and Grimes go up against <laughs> go up against Capella and and uh, oh, and, and Herder? Man. We normally get up, open the gifts, and then get to the Christmas Day game, come back, eat dinner. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but this year they're like, nah, we don't want to go. And you know, that's kind of like one of our traditions. I mean, my kids are getting older. We didn't go to the Christmas. I mean, to the Thanksgiving Day parade too this year. And you usually first always time, do. First time since we lived here, um, wow. we didn't go. But so you yeah. guys always go to a game on Christmas Day? Yeah, if it's like even if, if the Knicks, the Knicks usually play on Christmas Day. They always play usually the first game. Noon, so, yep. Yeah, we always we always go to that noon game. Um, and then in Thanksgiving, we always go to Thanksgiving Day Parade. But it's just a sign of my kids getting old, bro. It's sad. It's fucking yeah. sad. Dude, that is sad because I have to say, there's nothing I love more than tradition. And yeah. it, it, it was something really emphasized in my house and my family. My parents were huge on that. It's like one of the pillars of advice my dad always gives young families is coming up with traditions. And if I think about it, like for me, that is a super exciting aspect of holidays is the traditions like that. Mm-hmm. It, it warms my soul like I, and and being able to adhere to them. And then, yeah, growing up and having some of them change or break, it is a little sad, huh? It is a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just people moving on, different things. Like, I mean, yeah, it's just one of those things where, like, when when everybody gets together, it just it, it makes it better, you know, when, when we do get to do those things now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so it is what it is. Well, so what are, are what's, old. What's, what's your typical, like, Christmas traditions? Um, that usually the game, like we, we have a big, uh, Christmas Eve, like where we do like tacos, um, nice. that's a California thing. So we usually do a big Christmas Eve, like tacos, um, and then usually gumbo on Christmas. Um, but I think this year we're doing gumbo on Christmas Eve and then we're having like a traditional, um, Christmas with the dressing. Cause my mom made the dressing really good for Thanksgiving. Oh, so she wants nice. to make it again. Bringing so it back for Christmas. She's bringing it back for Christmas. So, nice. um. Yeah, it's just a just a big Thanksgiving. We we normally do like this week. We had the Rocket set up and um and usually a, a Broadway show. We're gonna go see Miss Doubtfire this year, but that shit got canceled. So we just <laughs> we just trying to figure out stuff to do day by day right now. Oh my gosh, I know, <laughs> I know. We're in this I, I we're in this period that you know I believe I don't believe it's gonna be a long lasting period just based on what we're seeing elsewhere. Um, Hopefully by the spring we should be all right. Yeah, but also just like Omicron itself, I think is going to be even quicker than that. I think you, I, you know, again, take this with a massive <laughs> grain of salt. This isn't our area of expertise, but just being well read on on the material and following trends, you know, uh, where this variant started, especially South Africa, it seems see like it's more of like a hurricane where it's coming fast and then dipping down quickly. So maybe in you know two to three weeks, you know, three to five weeks, we're we're well, yeah, we're back operating the way we kind of were for the last, you know, four or five months. Where I'll be it's able like, to go see Ms. Doubtfire. Yeah, where where it's not like, you know, 
obviously we still haven't gotten to 100% everything back the way it was, but we were operating at a pretty high level. No, of we were good. State. I, I could, yeah. I could have. I mean, I, I could have rocked out how we were a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? exactly. Like, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's funny, man. Even me doing my NBA games this past week, like I noticed where beginning of the year, like coaches were back, like you know, handshakes, hugs. Yeah, like when they talked to all, us, like it was all yeah, locked in. Yeah, yeah. And then this this week <laughs> now, it was back to fist bumps. Back- <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. It's like all right. Trying to still be able to accomplish the traditions right now, it, it's yeoman's work. I uh, saw I saw a funny meme that was like, uh, making it to Christmas without catching Omicron is the new Squid Games. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you, uh, what are you guys doing for Christmas? I mean, you, I know you guys have a bunch of traditions. Yeah, we do, man. We, um, so we used to, if it like, normal year and my traditions have altered slightly since doing the nba because of having yeah nba games um but normal year we would always go to dinner my cousin danielle's birthday is on december 23rd so we would always go to dinner normally in the city usually at carmine's but then sometimes it's it's changed to uh to duchess county but we go to dinner with like her my cousin shane her brother my family on that side in my family that would be one tradition that Christmas Eve, um, we would have like all the cousins on my mom's side, aunts and uncles would get together. And we also do something in my neighborhood called luminaries, where we have like these candles and in, in bags lit up all throughout the neighborhood. And you put them out, light them. And it's just like this gorgeous, absolutely beautiful scene. It just looks like a massive runway. And it's just beautiful. And so we drive through the neighborhood, go to church, and then like, uh, you know, read night night before Christmas. We did it all as kids. Now we do it with, you know, with my with the kids. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, open presents on Christmas morning, and we would get up early n- earlier now, and I would then go do my game. But now with like my game, sometimes not in New York, sometimes in New York, we actually have slid things a little bit like a day earlier. So we'll kind of do like a Christmas Eve as a Christmas morning with my yeah. broader family, you know? And then Christmas morning, we're more in just like, my sister will do it just with her kids and and my my brother-in-law, Josh. And then Andrea, me, and Evie will just do Christmas morning, just us. And we'll kind yeah, of see, slide. that type of stuff starts happening too. Like yeah. where everybody used to be together, but then Christmas morning, like you're just with your family. Yeah, And then we'll yeah. have dinner later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. exactly. So we're trying to, <laughs> We're all trying to like, man, I'm just like every day I'm literally praying that we all just make it there together yeah. for for this because, you know, I get such energy and joy out of those traditions, out of that experience with my family. And I do think that that has been one aspect of this equation that has been lost at times for those who have been, you know, relentless in mitigation strategies with the pandemic is not putting a cost on what you're losing with not having social interactions, gatherings, traditions, whatever it is, you know, that's, it's not as if there's not a cost there. There is, you know, it, it's, it, it hurts people mentally. It hurts their souls to not be able to be with family for these things. Yeah. So like, I, I mean, even honestly, like some of the decisions I've made over the last week of things I, I'm not doing that I was maybe gonna, it has less to do with me being afraid of getting ill because I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm three weeks out from getting boosted you know, I'm not worried about that. It's more so like I don't want to get a positive test where then I can't see my family, you know, where I can't go do that. And so, uh, yeah, man, I'm hoping we still could do as many traditions as we can. My dad is a ridiculous chef, like ridiculous. He's an unbelievable chef. He's going to like cook amazing meals on the 23rd and 24th for oh, us. Oh, nice. To try it. Yeah, man. And and dude, you know, the, the garden on Christmas has become part it's of my rocking. tradition too. Yeah. Oh, no, it's and, it, rocking on Christmas. and it's unbelievable, man. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's amazing, dude. Nick's fans are incredible. And, and there's an extra energy to Christmas day that I love. And that's why I like going to the game. I like, yeah. I like being in the garden on Christmas morning. And now the only question is, is whether the family's going to let you go, man. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> were, were you ever a dude who did like midnight present opening on Christmas Eve, or were you always like Man, wake up in the morning? No. Or? Well, my kids were when my kids were smaller. We did uh, we did uh, Christmas Eve. We would open up everything, yeah, because we would open up everything and leave it under the tree and not let them play with it till Christmas morning. And Ooh. then as we got older, 
We stopped rapping shit. We was like, fuck that. Like, why are we rapping gifts? No, like, you, you're not rapping stuff? Bro, Santa don't rap gifts, cuz. Like, yeah. Santa just bring the fucking toys and put them under the tree. So yeah. as my when we moved here, we yeah. stopped rapping. And then yeah. we let the kids, then we started letting the kids open on Christmas morning. You know what? Santa does a bespoke experience for each family, right? If you want, <laughs> if, if, if you if you want it wrapped, nah, Santa will wrap Santa, it. Santa, Santa doesn't wrap over here, cuz just yeah, drop Santa, that shit off, bro. Sa- Santa doesn't want <laughs> the Sabathias don't want to wrap, Santa won't wrap them. <laughs> Fucking under- five garbage bags of like wrapping paper and shit, cuz. Uh, like I, I I understand. All I, them I, kids. I I, I, appre- I appreciate that about Santa that. He will do as the family wants. If if you want, <laughs> if you want them wrapped, if you yeah, want, the, nah. if if you want the special paper as well, Santa will do that. If not, Sabathia House, they decided no. You know, all right, we, you want we, we decided no as as the, we got the the family group. Yeah, I four understand. Four kids and four <laughs> well, wrapping. Honestly, I'm sure Santa appreciated that because yeah, yeah, nah, it's a it lot of work. It off. It's a lot of that's a that's a lot of extra work, man. Um, well, I, I you know I hope that everybody is able to enjoy Christmas and and this holiday season, Um, even if things have been sort of altered or, you know, twisted a little bit over the last week. Hope that you are, uh, you know, obviously everybody's staying safe and healthy and and able to still, you know, get the familial joy uh, that they, you know, so normally attribute to this time of year. So, um, see, I, uh, you know, there's there's a bunch of things that have, transpired over the last week i guess since we were just talking nba let's start there and then we can move on to some big things in baseball as well i think the biggest story on your mind is something in golf actually yeah Uh, yeah. but but uh but just since we're talking hoops you know seeing the nba go through this i'm glad that they canceled some of these games because it was getting crazy like these rosters i did a magic nets game the other night which it, it was amazing hearing the crowd make it sound like a playoff game in the fourth quarter as <laughs> rookies are going nuts and everything. And David Duke for the Nets having 16 points and nine rebounds in the quarter, put back after put back. But dude, there were 24 players out in that game. That's 24 crazy. players between. But, COVID but just and in the injury. protocol or tested positive. But everybody, all those guys are in the po- com- protocol. Com- combination injury or in the protocol. But remember, you only go in protocol now this season if you're vaccinated, if you actually have a positive or inconclusive test. So there's no more close contact. In Last year, there was. Yeah. This year, there's not. So if you were vaccinated and, you know, you were riding on the bus with, you know, John and Chris and John and Chris test positive, well, you don't have to go in protocol. Go into the protocol anymore. Unless... You tested positive. That's if you're vaccinated. So, yeah, all these people are having positive or inconclusive tests. But what's happening is a lot of these guys are asymptomatic. and But once somebody on your team tests positive, then they start testing everybody daily, mm. in some cases multiple times a day. Um, whereas if you don't have positives, uh, you're not tested if you're vaccinated. So what's happening is a lot of teams are having one guy be positive, then they're testing all of a sudden, they're finding all these asymptomatic positives, and those guys are going into protocol. In the NFL, which I think is really smart, if you're fully vaccinated and asympt- fully vaccinated and asymptomatic, and your CT values are at a certain threshold, then if that's deemed non-infectious, non-contagious, then you're able to keep playing. Like oh, okay. I think the NBA is toying with that, but the all the other reality is like so many guys are getting it that the NBA is going to have this like hard couple week period. And then they're going to be on the other side of it. Cause then they don't test for months because they all, yeah, because just they've had all it. had it. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of just going to be a tough couple of weeks, but it sucks for the NFL right now because they're getting down to like playoff time and you know, the end of the season and you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want Rasha's fucked up. Like the Browns are playing my weak ass Raiders today. And they don't have a quarterback or the head coach. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and they fight for a playoff spot. So it just makes it tough when they get down to the football season at the end to not have your rock. Even for fantasy football, too. Like, you got yeah, motherfuckers man. out fantasy football playoffs oh, right now. Playoffs right now, man. Crushing motherfuckers, dog. So, yeah, it just sucks right now that, that we're having this, this spike at a time when, you know, I mean, but 
you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so it makes you remember, like, nobody gives a fuck about the playoffs or none of that oh, shit. Man. Like, <laughs> we still except, in the middle of a pandemic. It, except we do. You know, like, it, like <laughs> except we do. You know, it, it, it's it's funny, man. I was thinking back to that period of time where we had no live sports, no sports. for four months. Like, it was, was crazy. terrible, man. A lot of awful. A lot of show watching, cuz. Oh, my gosh. A <laughs> lot of... Oh, I got a new show for you. Yeah? Mayor Mar- of Kingstown. It's on Paramount Plus, though. You got to... Bro... I got so many fucking streaming services know. right now. I had to get uh, Discovery Plus so I can watch 90 Day Fiance. Oh, like, my gosh. I-, I think now that I have all these fucking apps, I think I'm paying more than I ever paid with fucking DirecTV uh, and cable. I'm, I'm sure you are. I'm sure it's you are, dude. Like, they got to yeah. bundle some of this shit. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. $9 for each one of these fucking streaming services. Yeah, man, it adds To watch up. one fucking show. Like, you're going you're to have to keep doing this podcast a little bit longer I, than you thought. I fucking <laughs> paid $9 for Peacock the other day to watch one hour of Charlie and Tiger. That shit was on from 12 uh, to 1. And then it came on at 1 o'clock on channel on, uh, on regular NBC. You know, but I uh, needed to watch those first three holes, guys. Yeah, man. Hey, I, <laughs> that's amazing. It was, it was worth it. Clearly. It was worth it. It was worth it. Well, their strategy worked. As oh you're my god, out, bro! Man. Uh, all right, so you know what? Let's let's table. We'll get into the the Kyrie aspect and and a little more hoops in a moment. But you just brought it up. Let's talk about Charlie and Tiger. See, because as soon as we hopped on the Zoom, <laughs> you were like, "Yo, this is the best thing to happen to golf." So, nah, it was must see TV, bro. Like it was it was insane. Obviously, just watching Tiger get back, you know, after the accident, nobody ever, you know, he didn't know if he was going to be able to keep his leg and all of that shit, and then watching him just swing a golf club and then to be locked in the way he was the, uh, the last two days was crazy, man. But to watch a 12 year old, like with all of that pressure, you know, your dad being the goat and then he just goes out and hits shot after shot after shot and makes putts. Like it's, it's, it, it was, it was so much fun to watch him this weekend, man. And I just think he's going to be great for golf. And like, I was thinking too, like, when do you ever get a chance to play with the goat? Like, in a setting where you're in a tournament. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you never really get that opportunity. So for, like, for him to play in these tournaments with his dad and, like, to gain that knowledge and the focus and all of that shit you need to win, I think it's going to be a, I think it's gonna be easier. He's got, he's got the cheat code for him to win tournaments, bro. Yeah. Oh, it, how, what, give me, like, did Charlie look like he's no doubt going to be a dynamite pro? He, he looked like if he keeps playing, no doubt. If he keeps playing and and you know the way he's the track that he's on yeah for sure he's gonna wow. be really good like yeah i mean on 17 like i mean he, he hit a fucking uh a, a wedge shot like it, i mean it was just it was the best shot of the day you know what i'm saying from a pro or a kid like it was it was the best shot of yesterday that he hit on seven it was crazy man it was fun to watch dude that's amazing I, my dad kept asking me i was like in the middle of feeding evie and i couldn't answer he kept calling me to be like, hey, you wa- are you watching Tiger and Charlie? Which I love, like, because yeah. he was so into it. And that, to me, is signaling you do- saying, I mean, this is limited anecdotal evidence, right? But you being immediately like, yo, my dad calling me, being like, are you watching this? That tells me everything I need to know about how important it is to the future of golf <laughs> to have this kid on the tour doing his thing. <laughs> But I, but even just me, for me, like, you know, I love, like, the father-son aspect, yeah. especially when the kids play the, the sport because that's the situation I'm in. Yeah. So, like, watching John Daly and his son, like, John Daly's, John Daly's son is an animal, too. Like, they ended up winning the tournament, but because the son carried him. You know what I'm saying? I think he's 16 or 17, maybe 15 or 16. Yeah. He's really, really good, man. So just watching these kids, like, you know, after their, you know, take after their dads was fun to watch. Yeah, man. There, I mean, there is, there, there's nothing like watching the parental connection. It, there, yeah. it's so, so even if you think about great moments, like I always think about Jorge's son running out at the All Star game, you yeah. know, or or Drew Brees' son when they won the Super Bowl with the big headphones on. Or I mean, yeah. those moments, and and I can obviously appreciate them even more now as a father. But all of us, you know, ultimately more than anything else, we want great things for our kids, right? Like that's your number one thought or your number one motivation or driver. And so to see it play out at that level, that's so special, man. Everyone can relate to that, connect with that. Um, and, and it's entertaining. Look, dude, I think the first thing I thought about with this, I thought about Star Wars. Like, yeah, you know what? Like we all wanted Ray to be 
part of the bloodline the second we watched episode yes. seven. You know, like we didn't just want her to be some we random needed that Jedi. Connection. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like we're like, who's her dad? Who's her mom? Like, what's her connection? Like, Speaking that's what of, we wanted. did you see? Did you see the uh, the Kith collection that just came out today? I bought the one Star of the hoodies Wars? today. Yeah. Fire! Yes, man. I wish I could say I just bought one thing. I yeah. bought a lot of shit. Did you? <laughs> I Would did. you? I I, I liked I the white the white Leia hoodie. I yeah. actually love that. I got the Boba that. Fett. The Boba Fett T shirt. Oh, I know it was it was sold out when I looked. The was Boba it? Fett T shirt looked great. Yeah. I and mean, then they had like all the old graphic tees, like all yeah. the like the man cause fire. Did, cause. did you go? Did you go nuts buying stuff? I did. I bought a lot of shit. Yeah, man. I'm actually. <laughs> I got up that. early this morning. And bought a lot. Oh of shit. man, the, d- dude, it looked. Uh, I the the Boba Fett. Yeah, if you go on Kit's website, I'm going on right now. They it got some ridiculous. fire stuff, yeah. By the by the way, Book of Boba Fett comes out this week, man. I know, 29th. Can't no. wait, man. Was that next week, right? Oh, next week, yeah, next yeah. week, 29th, yeah, yeah. Oh no, this still sold out. the The Boba Fett is the Boba Fett is sick, man. I actually think that Hoth one is pretty cool too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got, the, I mean, uh, C three PO, the the, but it's a it's a yeah. it's a crew neck though. I like I know. hoodies. You know me, what I'm saying? I know. I wish if that was too. a hoodie, I would have definitely bought that. Me too, man. That that's kind of how I felt too. Like I'm not a massive crew neck guy. I bought so. the Anakin T-shirt. Did you? Yeah. You oh, know I true. love I love the the, the little I know. Anakin. Yes, that's my favorite. Man. He's probably my favorite character in the whole fucking shit. I know. Which I so love I had to that, get that is. T-shirt. Hey, dude, we're gonna we probably are gonna see him at some point in some fashion here, like coming up with uh with, with I I think I don't know how they're gonna do it, but in I mean, Hayden Christensen's back for Obi Wan series, so mm-hmm. like you, you know, and Ahsoka, uh, the Ahsoka series. I think Hayden Christensen's going to be in as well, so he might oh, be really? like, I think so, yeah. So he might be like Anakin and not Vader for that one. Okay, okay, yeah, which would be which would which be dope. Be dope. I, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't. Anakin wait, was really dope because, like, I like uh, I really loved his character. I uh, know, man. Speaking of uh, uh, shows and whatever, watched Spider Man yesterday too. Oh, dude, I gotta see it, man. It's I good. gotta see it. Is it? It's everybody good. says it's great, man. It's legit. I, like yeah. my wife hates those Marvel movies, and she was in there crying. Was she like, really? It, yeah, oh. it was good. It was that at, good. At, at one of my uh, my old co-host Robin Lumberg said he cried multiple times during. It. He's a, <laughs> he was like, he, and he is not a crier. <laughs> He's the biggest Marvel fan I know. He said he cried multiple times. They making these movies so much better and just not about the action. You know what I'm saying? Like when the Marvel movies first came out, it was just about the action because, you know, us as kids with the comic books and, you know, being fans of it, we wanted to see the action right. And now that they have that right, the storylines for all of the movies are are really, really, really dope. I love it, man. They're doing a good job. Dude, Marvel, I mean, if you think about it, their hit rate on their movies has been like, just ridiculous, Bro, they're killing man. It. Killing Just, it. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. And um, it all ties in in this movie after you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man. It's pretty fucking dope how they it's, do it. It's it's incredible. I it's funny because I have to a lot of times like negotiate to get Andrea to watch like Marvel with me, you know? But then the second she watches, she's like, that was great. Like, that was really good. Like, <laughs> is is there another Iron Man we could watch? Like, she loved um last year when we watched um the uh oh what was the series with uh vision and uh oh wandavision wandavision yeah thank you yeah. yeah uh she loved it she loved that series i i love that too that's still my that's my favorite one they've done as far as a series yeah uh, wandavision for marvel was good yeah I, hawkeye I actually, is really good i love hawkeye yeah man. hawkeye this is, is good this is sick dude this is really haley steinfeld is terrific as that yes. character she is, I mean, I have an embedded bias because she was in Pitch Perfect, but like, I, <laughs> but she's great as that character. She it, is. I, I didn't know what to expect. Hawkeye's awesome, man. I love yeah, Hawkeye's, it. Uh, Hawkeye's really good. And, and really uh, good. what's the guy that plays? Jeremy, Jeremy Renner? Jeremy Renner, yeah. He's, he's Jeremy a great Renner. actor. And, and that's Jeremy who plays Renner. in Mary Kingstown. He's oh, the, really? He's the, yeah. He's the main actor in Mary King, Kingstown. He's really I, good. I loved him in The Town, man. It's yeah. kind of like that. Is it really? Like it's, it's one of yeah. You, you just gotta watch it. But, okay. So, yeah. But I, I gotta get Paramount you Plus. You gotta first. buy Paramount <laughs> Plus. <laughs> but I gotta buy Paramount. <laughs> you gotta watch it. But in order to watch it, you gotta buy Paramount Plus. Oh, you gotta it's do fucked it. Up. Oh fucked my up. gosh. All right. See, uh, the Mets have a new manager. Yeah. Buck Showalter. 
your thoughts? No, I think it's a good hire. I think, you know, you go with a baseball guy, um, you know, I, th- I think it could work. I think, um, you know, I don't, I have never really talked to Buck, but I, I hear that, you know, people love him and, you know, he's one of the smartest, you know, managers that guys have played for. So it seems like that's what the Mets need is like some stability right now, um, you know, in that clubhouse. But you know who I would have loved to see, but, you know, it just didn't happen. But uh, I think Buck there for a couple of years would be great. That's how I look at it, too. Like, I think Beltron was the guy who we looked at as he should be the guy to lead the Mets over the next decade, right? But if you're looking for someone just for this moment in time, I actually really like Buck as a hire because I feel like what you just said, that they could use that kind of like organization, if you will. If you want someone to just, just squeeze the most out of a group for a finite period of time... I think Buck is that dude. He's he's mm-hmm. a he's a total and I've worked with him a couple of times at Yes, you know, obviously followed him with the Yankees as their manager and then throughout his career. He's a total just baseball savant. He's obsessed with the game. He thinks about everything. Just to give a little insight, you know, I, I working with Buck this past year in studio, what he would do, the stuff he'd pick up on during a game is stuff like you would never even think of that we then build packages, little nuances of base running where he's looking at a secondary lead. Okay. And he's like, you know, I was noticing Gardner and this half hop step he was taking, you know, that a lot of guys just won't go for that extra inch. And I, and I noticed it in the third inning. And then in the sixth inning, he ended up scoring on a double where it wasn't a guarantee he would score even with his speed. Because of that hop step. Let, let, let's show him leading in the third inning how it wasn't fruitful and then how it was in the sixth inning. You know, he had all these ideas. Or, of, yeah, yeah or, like, or like on the other side when it comes to base running or even defensive alignment and just all of these like really small nuances of the game because that's the way he processes. And I do feel like we saw with the Orioles for an extended period of time, right, where he was getting the most out of that team when it came to wins you know, in the regular season and and to get them to the playoffs each year. I think the Mets are in that moment in time where they need someone who's going to be like drilled down, super attentive, you know, maybe even some would say anal at times to to get the most out of this group, to squeeze every win they can out of them. To me, this moment in their organization, he feels like the right guy for right now, just for this moment in time. Yeah, and I love that, like, you know, baseball is going back to hiring baseball fucking guys. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Whether it's, yeah. you know, Snitaker with the Braves or, you know, Dusty with the Astros. Like, we need, we need more fucking baseball guys in, in the dugout leading teams. Yeah. And not fucking puppets. Yeah. Hey, man. I, right. Because Buck's not just Like, if somebody, say, if somebody in the front office want to be the manager or you want to be the, like, if you want to fucking tell somebody what to do, then just come down to be the fucking manager. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoever's running these teams and fucking sending the lineup down, just come be the fucking manager. Mm. And stop blaming it on somebody else because this shit is all the, a lot of the shit that these teams are doing comes from upstairs. How how often do you think it happens? See, I think I think it's happening with 60 percent of the league. I think is happening with where the front office is really I dictating think. most of the like in game stuff. Yeah, I think so. Interesting. That's really interesting. By the way, to throw y'all back to a previous episode, we asked Aaron Boone about this very thing, and he had a really great detailed answer. Yeah, he so. Did. I would highly recommend you guys check in. If that's a topic that you're interested in, I'd highly recommend you going back and uh, and listening to Aaron talk about this because it was it was really interesting. So, okay, we both would have liked uh, Beltron to be the manager, but we both think of Buck as a good hire for this team at this match, moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, I think so, too, see. Um, I just seen uh, Mark Cate got hired by the A's. Yeah, what do you think about that? I think that's good. I mean, I think that's a good hire. I would have loved to see Ron Washington get that job, you know what yeah. I'm saying, to get another chance. But, you know, Kate being a – is this his first time as a manager, right? Or was he – did he manage the Padres? Did he mar- manage the Padres? I, I feel like he might have. Huh. I don't know, though. Um, but I him mean, being a first-time manager, I think, you know, I love – I love guys getting the first chance, uh, you know, that, that first yeah, chance. Did, we should both know this. Did he – I Bobby, feel like – Bobby, did he, did Cott say maybe manage before? A, maybe he was just a bench coach. Yeah, I don't know if he ever managed with the Padres. Like, I mean, I'm going to look this up. Because for some reason, when you said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? And then I'm like, I feel like he did. Maybe he didn't. I don't know, man. I don't think he did. 
Maybe not. Maybe he, maybe he didn't. I'm I'm looking it up just to make first sure. First time. Now Bobby said this is the first time. Yeah, first so, time. Yeah. Okay, he didn't. So does Sadie. All right. Yeah. What is it weird that you and I both thought he did? Or he might Yeah, have? maybe maybe he like that he was up for that job or something before Tingler or I know he's been interviewed a bunch of times for different jobs. Or or maybe oh he was the Padres hitting coach. Then he went to the A's bench coach. All right. Yeah. Or maybe we're just picturing him in the Padres outfield, and that's somehow making us think of him as manager. Maybe. That too. <laughs> um, which brings us to, I, I threw out on Instagram uh, some uh, questions to folks uh, for us. And Carr Apo, who's a loyal follower of R2C2, mm-hmm. asked, do we think Brett Gardner will play baseball in 2022 or retire? Uh, I think Gardy wants to play. I think Gardy wants to play. I don't know if Gardy will play for anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I think he wants to play still. I if haven't he, talked to Gardy since the season ended. I yeah. haven't talked to him. And that's normally how his little ass is. Like, you never hear, like, after the season ends, he might as well, be, he might as well move to fucking Siberia because you can't even get a hold of him. That's but so that's, that's uh, but I mean, just knowing him, I think, I think he wants to play. I, um, I would love to to see him back. I think his leadership is still very needed in that room. Um, and I, I feel like he always, you, you know, unless there's an obvious upgrade, there's always value in a guy. You could just stick out there at any outfield position. No, he's going to give you a quality at bat. He was much better offensively the second half of this past year. And he has institutional knowledge that, you just can't replace, and that isn't necessarily there right now. Uh, yeah, and I was about to say, like, it's just like a guy that can do it in New York. Th- that's hard to come by. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if you if he's out there and you know um, you're gonna need him, then I mean the Yankees have to sign him. Um, e, I'll take a couple other questions here. E Jins Five said, "Is Sue Bird coming back?" Uh, thanks for you guys. Great work and happy holidays from France. That's Ooh. a question from you. Oh, from yeah, France. Yeah, from France. I like nice. it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, I I think I would I would again refer to a previous episode. I think Sue gave uh when she filled in for C a couple weeks ago, I think she gave strong indications that there's definitely uh, a, a strong possibility she'll play uh one more season. So she hasn't said anything official yet, but um I think that if you go back and listen to that episode, you'll hear someone who sounds like sounds like they may uh, go back and play. It's funny because she talked about, see, how she was like very opposed to the whole retirement tour thing, despite mm-hmm. your uh, it, it, admonishment. And now she kind of can see the importance of it, you know, and, and, and having a year where the fans get to, you know, say goodbye. And she feels like she could actually deal with it better than she thought. So... Um, that at least is in a different place mentally than it was. So I think that that no longer would keep her from coming back. In fact, I think it could entice her to come back. Yeah, no, I mean, that that part of it is 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 a huge part of it. You know, for me, I, like I said, but um, it, it, that, it's hard. You yeah. know, like that last year is very hard. It's very emotional. Like, you know, it's your last time going to a lot of these places. You know what I'm saying? So it's really hard. And then a lot of people demand a lot of your time. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, it's it's just the price of being who you are. So I'm excited for it. Because you're gonna now you're gonna be there at her. You know, if she comes back and plays this year, you're gonna be there for her last game at absolutely. You know, whatever at Barclays. You know, when she's in New York, and then everybody's gonna show up for her last home game. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like that. Exactly. That shit matters, man. Yes. And like, yeah, it's gonna matter to her too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When when they look back and they see the tape and then there's all these people at her games, like, you know what I mean? Like at the end, like, yeah, of course. That, that's uh, a huge deal. A hundred percent. All right. Three different people wanted to ask us, see, about Kyrie. Karis, they had different questions about it, but it can kind of just uh-huh. lead us into the topic. Karis Legote said, should the Nets trade Kyrie for Karis? David FBO3 said, does Kyrie coming back to the Nets part-time make them the overwhelming favorite? And uh, JKOH photo said, how could the Nets be so spineless? Um, so there's, th- <laughs> there's three different aspects of this. Uh, to, <laughs> to get specific, first things first, see, um, with the uh, uh, Karis thing, no, I don't think that's no, a deal that they not. would do. As much as we love Karis, no. Uh, with the overwhelming favorite, um, I would say 
yes. I think I think if Kyrie is playing basketball for them, I do think the Nets are the favorite. Yes, I, I, I do. What about you? Yeah, absolutely. If Kyrie comes back, he's healthy, and and he's Kyrie, then yes, absolutely, they're the favorite, for sure. Even then, with Harden being what he is right now. Yeah, which is like 80% of what we're used yeah. to. Um, and maybe, see, maybe some of that gets unlocked for him with Kyrie coming back. On the floor, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And then uh, to the question from Jayco Photo about how could the Nets be so spineless, um, I, I, I want to give some perspective on this because I think a lot of people, myself included, really liked where the Nets stood uh, when they made their original decision, saying like, hey, we are not going to accept a part-time player. I think where there's a disconnect is I think some people thought that that decision was born out of the Nets having a stance on vaccination and kind of saying like, we're not going to accept an unvaccinated player. And while the Nets are very pro-vaccine as an organization, and, and Joe Sy, the owner, has made that very clear, the Nets' motivation for making that decision was basketball. It was because they thought it was not good for their group, and it would be a distraction to have someone as a part-time member, to have someone who wasn't all in on what they were doing. And what's happened over the course of the season is their thinking around that has Evolve. Now, you could still say that you think it's BS to have someone there part time and it's not good for the group. You could absolutely have that opinion. But the reason the Nets now are in a position where they feel like it's better for the group to have them part time than not at all versus the way they thought about it before is because of the circumstances of the season. They haven't been able to have the continuity they want. Quite frankly, I think they probably haven't looked as good against the top tier competition as they thought they were going to. You know, thanks in large part to Joe Harris being out and, and James Harden not looking like the guy we. Is seen Joe in Harris the past. out the whole year? No, he'll be back probably in in a few weeks. Okay. Um, but you know, they haven't looked quite as good. They've looked like they've needed Kyrie, um, and they haven't had continuity because all these guys are out in health and safety protocols now anyway, and and the minutes load has become untenable for uh, Kevin Durant and James Harden. So I was about like, to say that's what I was about to say. Let me actually, let me say this to yeah. You don't think KD made this, like, not made this decision, but, like, was hit whoever up and was like, yo. He probably hit Kyrie and was like, yo, would you do the, play, like, play on oh, the road? Yeah. And for sure, he went to the organization and was like, yo, we played too many minutes. Like, this ain't going to work, guys. Y'all yeah. got to y'all gotta change the way you think about this and let this man come play on the road. Yeah, I don't know if Durant has it in his personality to just, to, like, dictate, you know, like, and say, like, hey, this is happening. I'm but, sure he did, but I'm sure he he had he, something to say about yes. it. Yes. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. I I I'm sure, see, that Durant was totally on board with the idea yes. of Kyrie coming back part-time. I, I think all those guys in the beginning Everybody I, were, right. But I think in the beginning they were on board with him not being there if he wasn't gonna be full time. I think everybody was kind of on the same page about, hey, like that's not right. And I think everybody's on the same page now about, whoa, hold on a second. If we're going to achieve what we want to achieve, he's like, got to be here. He's got to be here because this isn't sustainable. You can't have Kevin yeah. Durant playing 40 minutes a night. And as an organization, think about it. Like you are trying to win a championship. You, you have a lot of money tied up in Kevin Durant. You can't run him into the ground. Kyrie helps you not, even if he's just playing road games. Can't run James Harden into the ground. Kyrie being there helps you not, even if he's just playing part time. Yeah. And the other thing I think, see, is I think there's a thought, at least by some, and I, I maybe for some it's wishful thinking, some think it's it's valid, that if Kyrie is around the group, you know, constantly, maybe his mind changes about, you know, vaccination and being there for home games. There's also, he just got tested positive for COVID. You, it's not advisable. I don't even know if it's allowed, never mind the advisable part of it, to get vaccinated I believe within 75 days after having COVID or 60 days. So now the Nets could potentially get an exemption to have him play home games. At home games. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the city would do, but they certainly could have that avenue to not to have him play home games until he's 
you know, eligible to get vaccinated Man. after being positive. And maybe I'm, then I'm, the I'm things have gonna, changed a little bit, you know? I'm not going to lie. When I seen him going to safety and health and safety protocols, I was like, ah, he, he went and got COVID. So he don't have to take, so he has to get vaccine <laughs> so he can play like, so he can get, that's what I thought for real. Really? Like, yeah. I, you know, I was like, oh, so now he don't have to get the vaccine because he's just tested positive. Everybody's seen, uh, you know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. knows he's tested positive. Uh, and now he's got 80 days or whatever before he has to get the vaccine. And, and honestly, see, it, that that might, I don't know, but that might be an avenue into him being able to play at home now, at least for that yeah. period of time. Um, the other thing is, you know, our country has not adopted prior infection as part of immunity when it comes to you know, passports, for lack of a better word, and, and being allowed into things. But that actually is very much a part of other countries' uh, immunity profile that they recognize, which I think makes sense. It is like if you have prior infection in, in many other countries, whether it's in Europe or Canada, they look at that as, you know, a dose of vaccination. In some cases, there's, you know, different ways they look at it, but they look at it as at least a dose of vaccination. So again, Maybe that evolves, right? Maybe that changes here where it's like, hey, okay, yeah, Eric Adams isn't going to get rid of the vaccine mandate, but could he recognize prior infection as part of immunity that helps go towards it? So I think the whole thinking is maybe there's avenues to get him available without getting vaccinated down the road. Maybe he gets vaccinated by being being around the guys, then being motivated to. Maybe that plant-based vaccine, I forget the company doing it, ends up getting approved in a few months and he takes that. Or maybe he doesn't and you just use him on road games to lighten the load and have a chance to win those games. But right now, I think they're focused on right now, see, and they know in this moment in time, they need another untapped resource to help lighten the load. He's available. They're paying him. They might as well use him. And I think hey, that's where they came out. Hey, if, uh, if he can only play in road games, for the playoffs, they should not have home field event, home court advantage. Then <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, right? It's funny, but I, you don't want you don't want home court if this guy can't play at home. I, I, I will say this: see, I was I I have come around and I agree with their decision <clears throat> at this moment in time. I think it will be a problem if he's only available for road games in the playoffs. I, I I just think right now they're not worried about that problem because it's down the road. And as we just laid out, there's a lot of ways it can change, right? But let me be clear. If Kyrie is only available for road games in a playoff series, that will be a massive distraction and that will be a problem. There's just a lot of pasture between now and then to try and come up with a solution. And that's why I'm not worried about it yet. Where are you at with the decision, I don't, see? I don't think... Uh... I don't think it'll be a problem in the playoffs if 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 that's the what it is right now during the season. You like as players or whatever, you just get used to what the circumstances are. So if if he goes the rest of the season, they can only play on the road. When it gets to the playoffs and he can only play on the road, you just it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I mean, just it depends on how this plays out with him just playing on the road. Like if that shit works, then I don't think I, I mean it it just is what it is. You know what, what I'm about, saying? But see, what about if you were like Okay, do, right now, as a teammate, would you be like, yes, get him back? Or would you be all on board with this? Yeah, I mean, I would have been on board with from him jump? playing in the road games from jump. I told okay. you that. Yeah, okay. Oh, you would have been. You, you did say that. You said even without practicing, you would have been. Yeah, uh, let the motherfucker play on the road. That I, I had a problem with. But because he can practice, I think, you know, there's enough continuity there. Um, I thought this was a really honest, telling quote that sums up the way sports are from Joe side of the New York post. After this, he said, we're trying to be practical. And as I've always said, I don't want to make this a political issue. My only religion is to win games and win the championship. That's where we are. And you know what? It, it, a lot of people that quote may turn their stomach the wrong way. I appreciated the honesty of it because that's the truth about people who are in sports. Their religion is trying to win games and they will bend in a lot of ways to adhere to that one principle in a lot of ways that morally won't make you feel good in a lot of ways that won't make you feel good in other aspects of your standards and principles. But we see that time and time again in sports. And Joe is just kind of putting it out there for you, knowing that right now their best chance to win is Kyrie Irving. By the way, I think that the reason they didn't do it in the beginning was because they thought having him as a part-time player was hurting their chances to win. Now they realize, no, they need him to help 
uh, in order for them to up their chances to win. For um, sure. But we'll see how it all – it's going to be wild when he uh, when he gets on the floor for the first time, see. Um, but uh, Oh, he's going to get a standing ovation on the road. It's going to be it's going to be crazy, which, you know, I mean, it, I also do want to say, like, it, it doesn't make sense to and, and, you know, I couldn't be more pro these vaccines. You know, you and I are both boosted. I couldn't be more for it. Made that very clear. It doesn't make sense to have road unvaccinated players be allowed to They'll play, play in the Barclays. It's and, stupid. And, 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 but Kyrie can't like I think he sh- I, I, I thought from jump, just get vaccinated. I thought that. But I can say that and with nuance also <laughs> acknowledge it's ridiculously inconsistent to be like, oh, road players can come in and play unvaccinated, but home ones can't. Makes no sense. Makes absolutely yeah, no right. sense. Especially when he would have to test the day of as well, every every single time he plays. So it's uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but we'll see how it unfolds. Um, see, I, uh, I, I have to ask you, have you seen Love Actually yet? Because no. last, oh, come on, man. You got to see it. The best Christmas mu- movie, man. Man, I haven't even watched Home Alone yet. Oh. I normally, we've normally watched it by now. You're behind on your Christmas movies. You got to get yeah. it together, man. Well, I guess we ain't doing shit this week. The Rockets got canceled and the, our, our, our uh, Broadway show, so we got time to watch movies. You got to get it done then, man. Now's the time. All right, see, hey, a, a very Merry Christmas to you, to Amber, to the kids, uh, to Margie. Uh, to Auntie Flo. Uh, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> uh, wait, Auntie Glow or Auntie Flo? Glow, Glow. Glow. I, I do that to her sometimes. Auntie Glow, yeah, I'm no, sorry. We used to it. We used yeah, to it. <laughs> uh, uh, Auntie Glow, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. It's it's just your dressing has me distracted. Oh, um, man. And, uh, and to our audience, man. You know, we love you guys. The way you support us, the way you listen to us. I know it's a little weird time, especially in the Northeast again, but I really hope everybody's able to spend... Happy, healthy holidays uh, with their family and friends. Yeah, for sure. Merry Christmas to you, too, for, uh, you know, you, you, Evie and Angie. It's first Christmas together. It's going to be fun, man. First Christmas morning. Oh, awesome. I'm so exci- I'm so excited for it, man. And she's getting, like, more and more interactive. So it's, uh, it's going to be great. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. And we will see you in the new year. God bless.